Right, good morning, and welcome to worship at First Presbyterian Church of Waukesha. Whether you are joining us in person or online, we're glad that you are all here. Number of announcements to go through today. Um, after church today, uh, loaves and fishes, it is our turn to serve for that. It starts at 1.30 at the Hope Center. If you have any questions on that, please get with Susan Byshank. Um, right after church, our uh, adult ed will begin. I believe Andrew is leading that. Is that correct? Yeah. Say again. Yes. So Andrew will be doing that. And it'll be uh, downstairs in the old caring place office area. Um, I just made the assumption that Andrew was doing that. So it uh, looks like I was correct there. Um, the upside to the uh, COVID right now is we have an opportunity to learn the Greek alphabet. Uh, the downside is we are in the Delta variant, and with its uh, ongoing uh, issues that it's causing, we're going to continue to wear masks in worship and socially distance, but we will uh, sing as long as we are masked, so that's, that's a good thing. As it says here, sing while masked, no problem. Um, there will be a congregational meeting on October 3rd, uh, right after church, and the purpose of that is to the elect the uh, 2021 nominating committee. So in classic Presbyterian fashion, we're going to make a committee, and then we're going we're to nominate a committee to do the nominations for our elders. So um, in good form there. Um, we do have some extra masks that are available that were part of our blessing of the backpacks and briefcases last Sunday. Uh, they are at the back of the sanctuary, so if you need a few, uh, feel free to take one and possibly even gift a few to your friends. Uh, women's breakfast will be this week, uh, Tuesday, September 21st at 9 a.m. Uh, I don't have a location. Does anybody have that? What you got, Gladys? The coop? It, it the coop. Okay, and okay, and, and because it's a coop, there's uh, two doors. Because otherwise, if it had four doors, it'd be a sedan. That, that's the thing about chicken houses. I know, right? Um, also, Pastor Glenn will be on vacation this week. Uh, he will have his cell phone with him. Uh, if you do have a pastoral need, please reach out. Um, we'll have uh, people available as well. So with all that excitement, is there, are there any other announcements? All right, well, with that, let's take a moment to welcome God into our hearts and minds as we prepare to worship. All right, I now invite you to uh, stand as you are able and join me in our responsive call to worship that is printed in the bulletin. Happy are those who follow in the ways of Yahweh God. God's ways are just and merciful. Those who follow God's ways are continually nourished in faith. They continually grow in Come, let us open our hearts to God's compassionate love.
God deliver us, delivers us from paths of des des devastation and keeps our feet from stumbling. Let us confess all that keeps us from walking in God's holy way. First out loud and in, and in the silence of our hearts, together we pray. In today's reading, the disciples want to decide about who's in and who's out. It sounds all too familiar as we often make similar decisions on the basis of people's theology, their sexual preference, their cultural background, their political stance. Forgive us if our actions or lack of action have contributed to whether people feel welcomed into our lives, into our church. Scripture says, whoever welcomes one child in my name welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. May the peace of Christ be with you all. And also with you. Thank you. Let us show each other a sign of that peace. And remember the people in the balcony.
May you always remember when the shadows fall, you do not walk alone. A reading from the Gospel according to Mark, chapter 9. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O God, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Verses 30 through 37. Listen for God's word. Jesus and the disciples went on from there and passed through Galilee. He did not want anyone to know it, for he was teaching his disciples, saying to them, The Son of Man is to be betrayed into human hands, and they will kill him. And three days after being killed, he will rise again. But they did not understand what he was saying and were afraid to ask him. Then they came to Capernaum, and when he was in the house, he asked them, What were you arguing about along the way? But they were silent. For on the way, they had argued with one another, Who was the greatest? Jesus sat down, called the twelve, and said to them, Whoever wants to be first must be last of all and servant of all. And then he took a little child and put her among them. And taking her into his arms, he said to them, Whoever welcomes one child in my name welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We're entering a moment in the church year when we find ourselves in a particular patch of scripture passages. We're in a moment when the disciples have to decide whether or not to join with Jesus. These moments of choice come to all who are Christ followers and come unpredictably, unexpectedly, at junctures in our lives. Sometimes they come in joyous occasions, like when two people look each other and say from their heart, I do. Their whole life changes at that point for better or for worse until death does them part. Their parents' lives change as well. When those vows happen in a church setting, it is clearer that this couple is joining with Jesus and with each other. When those vows are said outside of a church, Jesus, although hidden, is present when a couple forges a covenant in front of others. Sometimes the moment to join with Jesus comes when those vows have been fulfilled and death does indeed part the couple. The survivor is still bonded to their loved one, as scripture says so eloquently, love never ends. But the daily physical presence of their loved one has been altered. The phrase, God is home for those who go beyond and home to us who stay behind is so true. We join with Jesus, after all, he wept at Lazarus' death in our grief and our mourning as our loved one joins with Jesus in another way, in death and resurrection. Sometimes the moment to join with Jesus comes when the covenant between two people is broken and divorce happens, or when our own brokenness seeps out of our lives and a relationship ruptures and our humanity shows. Words said in haste to children that sound a lot like what our parents said to us are words spoken without thinking about their impact 
addictions that may have a stranglehold on our lives, or simply said, we come to a moment when our broken nature is clearly seen, and we know that we need help. We catch a glimpse of how others see us, and after a moment or two of denial, we turn to Jesus and join him walking the road of suffering, for we want to see more clearly and be healed. So where is Jesus in today's passage? Where will we be joining him? Well, he's just been in the far reaches of Israel. You can kind of look at the map. The Sea of Galilee, and then the Jordan River, and then down to the Dead Sea, and then he's been way up at Caesarea Philippi. Far reaches. On the borderlands, if you will. Caesarea Philippi was the northernmost city in Israel, and he is now on his final journey with his disciples, making his way to Jerusalem. It is a precious time to be with his disciples, and he does not want to be disturbed. He is preparing the disciples for the unimaginable. His arrest, his trial, his physical suffering and humiliation, his death on a cross, and then his resurrection. The disciples do not understand, and this is one of the phrases that caught my attention. They were afraid to ask him. Now, Scripture says that the disciples were afraid to talk to Jesus. Did they not have ears to hear or eyes to see? Had they not asked Jesus questions before when they did not understand? Like when he explained the parable of the sower to them? They were afraid to ask Jesus what he meant at this point? They've been asking him questions all through this time. But our fear... My fear gets in the way of being curious to hear from others about how not only do they see the world, but how they see us. I have learned through the school of hard knocks and a growing trust in Jesus that Jesus and other Christ followers have something to teach me. I still have blind spots. I still want to be able to see more clearly, love more dearly, and follow Jesus more nearly day by day. Even though it's hard to be shown how my humanness has leaked out, I now welcome those moments. After all, we are bound together in community for a good reason. The other phrase that caught my eye was this. They were silent. When Jesus asked them a question, they are silent. I could see myself in the scene. I remember a time when my mom asked me how I got a hold of a $20 bill. I was six at the time, and I was silent because I had taken the bill out of their hiding place where they kept ready cash, and I was flashing it around the neighborhood. I neither had the ability to face up to what I had done nor the words to describe what I was thinking. I was six after all, and when I was exposed in my humanness, I met her questions with silence. I had nothing to say. I could not explain my actions. But Jesus does not leave the disciples there in their silence. He does not get up and discuss and go on his way by himself. This Following Jesus is tough stuff, and being a Christ follower is not for the faint-hearted, as my friend Norma says. We are constant learners, both of the life and words of Jesus, but also of our own brokenness and our need for Jesus. 
Jesus shows them grace and then teaches them a world-altering lesson. He does not confront them with their absurd desire to be number one, to be the greatest. Muhammad Ali is the greatest, and there is nobody in comparison, right? Jesus knows that our human grace, greatness comes and goes. It is not eternal. But the disciples are showing our humanity, our immaturity, to think that we are more than ourselves, more than we are created to be. Jesus does not reprimand these disciples, quite the opposite. He extends grace to them. He sits down, the posture that means that he's now teaching, and schools them on how he defines greatness. He places a child in front of them. A child. He's not highlighting the innocence of the child or her naivete or trustworthiness, but the child's lowly status is one always under the authority of another and without rights. In other words, her vulnerability. Remember, children back then were not thought much of in the times of Jesus. Infanticide was still practiced, mostly by exposure. Jesus teaches these disciples how to set their minds on divine things, to see the world as God sees it, to love the world as God so loves it, the vulnerable, the weak, those in need of protection, care, and a hand up. And here's the tautology. When we welcome one such vulnerable person in the name of Jesus, we welcome Jesus. And when we welcome Jesus, we welcome God. We welcome God's holy presence into our lives, into our world. It is a circle of hospitality that is established between us, the vulnerable and Jesus. We know we need Jesus. The vulnerable need us and Jesus. And it is Jesus, the one who was humble enough to be born in our flesh, that brings us all together. There's no inferior, no greatest, just a mutual exchange of gifts. I was walking down my street yesterday. There's a gentleman there that I had not seen before. And he was looking crestfallen down on his luck. And I generally don't do this, but I reached into my wallet, pulled out some money, and said to him, would you do me the favor of accepting this money? Would you do me the favor of accepting this money? It is not my money, it is Jesus's, and I don't do it all the time, but I wish I could. You see, this is what can happen at Lowe's and Fishes this afternoon. We're not there because we're so good and holy. We come with our food and our beverages as a gift to Jesus. We come to prepare a meal at Lowe's and Fishes because if our eyes are open, we will meet Jesus in the vulnerable and the needy. We will recognize our neediness and the neediness of God's children that gather for that meal, no matter how many of them there are. 
they will show us time and time again how the proper pronoun is we. Even though we may not see Jesus, we will join with Jesus as we are welcomed and as we welcome our brothers and sisters who humble themselves by brothers by, by coming to that meal show us how Jesus welcomes us. We who thought we were so great find ourselves being welcomed by those who are least in the eyes of our world. That is the house that Jesus is building, a house of welcome, where by grace, even we are admitted. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. Lord, your world is topsy-turvy. We get so locked into who is winning and who is not. Who is the greatest and who is not. And we realize that we worship, we worship you who humbled yourself to be born in our flesh and ended up in disgrace on a cross that has been for ages and ages a stumbling block for the wise. continues to be a stumbling block. But you have shown us the beauty of each human life, no matter how disfigured, no matter what path they have gone down, no matter how our society has treated them. Show us, Lord. Open our eyes, our hearts. To the welcome that you have for us. that includes so many people. In the name of Jesus, we pray, and let the people say, Amen.
Let us pray. Loving God, it's such a privilege to come to you this morning and worship you. I have you speak through the voices of the choir, through Karen's choice of organ pieces, for the wonder of the hymns, and the many years of service that this church has given to this community. Thank you. Thank you for the privilege of being able to come together. So many around the world who call upon your name have to meet in secret, are being persecuted. We pray for those in Myanmar who are undergoing a tremendous cataclysmic moment in their country's life that we barely hear about. May the violence stop and talks begin. We think of all the people that are affected by the fires or the hurricanes or the flooding or the mudslides because of climate change. May we take steps so that this will not be the new normal. We're not waiting for the other shoes to drop. We ask protection on the firefighters, in particular, out west. We pray for all the school children that are coming back into open schools, but still under strict protocol for COVID and the amount and the number of children and, and young kids that are contracting COVID. It is not normal, Lord, this school year or even bus drivers National Guard people have to be pressed into service to be bus drivers. Thank you for the many doctors and nurses that are working and researchers around the world. We lift up the family of David Valentine as they grieve the loss of his death. Continue to pray for the Waukesha City Church and for ourselves as we continue to figure out how to share this building. Thanks. We pray all this in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever, amen.
You know the old joke, a man dies, name's Glenn, goes up to heaven, being shown around by St. Peter, and he says, Russ is here? Wait, Sh Charlotte is here? Oh my gosh, Bob is even here. And is that Andrea over there? And he looks at St. Peter and says, why is everybody like silent and looking at me? And St. Peter says, well, they're amazed that you are here. Right? Yeah, exactly. We are welcome, as we are. Sometimes that is so hard to understand because our humanness shows and we have to make amends. Sometimes we go down the wrong path and Jesus puts somebody in front of us to say, turn around and let's try this again. But we're still welcome. And may the peace of Almighty God, the Creator, the Christ, and the Holy Spirit remain with us now and always. Amen? Amen. Amen. I'll see you outside.